Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson. Today we will learn about what floats, sinks or mixes. The important points of today's chapter are going to be what floats on water, what sinks in water and what mixes in water. Now before we go ahead, here is something to warm you up. Now it is a day after the rains. The drains are filled with water. So my friend Billy is ready with paper boats to set them sail in puddles and drains that are filled with water. Now his friend Tommy bought his toy boat. But what do we see here? The paper boats made of light material float on the water while the plastic toy boat sank in it. Now, do you know why the paper boats floated and the plastic boats sank? Now, you may have seen instances where certain objects float on water or sink in water. What determines which object will float or sink in the water? Well, first of all, the density of the material determines whether the object will float or sink in the water. All substances come in three forms solid, liquid and gas. Now all substances are made of molecules. Some molecules are heavier than others and some molecules are more denser than others. The molecules present in a solid are more densely and compactly packed compared to the molecules present in liquids and gases. Now have a look at these pictures. The picture in which you can see molecules being closely and compactly packed are the ones for solid. The molecules that have a little space between them are the molecules of a liquid. And the molecules which have a lot of space between them and which allows them to move freely are molecules of gas. Now, if the substance is denser than the liquid, then it will sink in the liquid. And if the substance is less denser than the liquid, then it will float. You can try this by taking a piece of wood and a piece of cork of the same size. Put them in water and see whether they float or sink. The cork floats on the water while the other piece of wood sinks. You can see that even made from the same type of wood, the cork floats. This is because the cork is porous and has tiny holes present in it. Unlike other woods, the cork is loosely packed and is porous. There is air present in its holes, which makes it lighter. As it is sparsely packed with air, the cork is denser. That helps it float, while the other piece of wood was heavy and denser, so it sank in the water. Now, will the cork float on all the liquids? Whether the cork floats or sinks does not depend only on the density of the cork but also on the density of the liquid. The cork was less dense compared to the water and the wood was more dense compared to the water. That is why the wood sank and the cork floated. Just like solids, not all liquids have the same density. Take a teaspoon of a colored oil for example mustard oil and pour it in a glass of water. You will see that the oil floats on the surface of the water. This is because it is lighter and less dense compared to the water. This is also the reason why cream floats on the surface of milk. Now did you know, you can never sink in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is a lake with very high salt content. It even surpasses the salt content of the seas. 33% of the water is salt and minerals. Because of this, you will float on it. As if the water is denser than your own body. Now, you all must be confused. So let me explain how density affects sinking and floating. All objects exert force on each other. In the same way, when we place an object in water, water also exerts a force on it, called the Bion force. Now, 
the buoyon force acts in the opposite direction upwards against the force of gravity. This makes the object feel even lighter in water. The Archimedes Principle The Archimedes Principle states that the buoyant force on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. This means the more fluid that an object displaces, the more the buoyant force is applied on it. The more the surface area of an object, the more fluid it will displace. This is why it is easier to float on water when you are lying on your back. This way, you displace more water because you have more surface area, which leads to a greater buoyant force. Some things, instead of floating or sinking in water, end up dissolving in them. Put a teaspoon of salt in a glass of water. Stir it with a spoon. Can you see the salt particles? You cannot see the salt particles as the salt has dissolved in the water. This is called a salt solution. Sometimes it can be a combination of different substances which are of different states of matter. Now here is an interesting tidbit for you. Archimedes was one of the world's greatest mathematicians. He figured that the level of water increased when he immersed himself in his bathtub. Once he realized that the density is equal to the water displaced, he created the Archimedes principle, which talks about the positive, negative and neutral buoyancy force. Now, here is something for us to think about. A nail made of iron sinks, but a ship floats. Why? Ships that are made of tons of steel can float because they take up a lot of surface area and displace a lot of water. The inside of the ship has many air pockets, which make the average density of the ship less. And we have read that the buoyant force also pushes the ship up. And as the surface area of the ship is large, it also displaces more water and hence the buoyant force is acting in a large way. But a nail has very less surface area and it displaces very less water and is also denser than water. So it sinks into the water. Thus, because of less density and high buoyant force, the ships float on water. In some mixtures, the distribution or arrangement of components is different throughout the mixture. Such mixtures are called heterogeneous mixtures. For example, the soil. But the mixtures in which the substances are evenly spread throughout the mixture are called homogeneous mixtures. For example, tea or air. Homogeneous mixtures in which one or more substances completely dissolve into the other are called a solution. For example, tea, salt water solution, your sugar solution, etc. Solutions may be solids dissolved in liquids like tea. Solutions may be gases dissolved in liquids like soda water. There may be gases dissolved in other gases and liquids dissolved in other liquids. In other words, if you mix different substances and they stay at an even distribution and when you cannot spot a difference in the substance with a naked eye, then we get a solution. For a solution, it is important to have a solute and a solvent. A solute dissolves in the solvent. When you mix salt in water, salt is a solute and water is a solvent. For a solution, a solute must be soluble in a solvent. When we put oil in water, it floats on water. This shows that these two substances are insoluble in each other. But when we stir the water, the oil seems to disperse in the water and form a solution. This is called an emulsion. An emulsion is a heterogeneous mixture where one liquid is made to disperse in the second liquid. Butter is an emulsion of water in fat. 
mayonnaise is also an emulsion of oil in water. So here is today's science top up for you. The egg float test. To know whether eggs are fresh or not, here is an experiment. Fill a bowl with water and place eggs in the water. If they float to the surface, they are not fresh to eat. This is because the egg shells are porous and allow air to penetrate the shell. The older the egg, the more air inside it and hence less dense, making it float. So here is the glossary of today's lesson. This place, the occupation of a submerged body of a volume, which would otherwise have been occupied by a fluid. This purse, the distribution of a substance over a wide area. Bioncy, the tendency of an object to float in a liquid. So here is a mind map of today's lesson. According to the Archimedes principle, the weight of the liquid displaced is equal to the bion's force. Now, a substance will sink or float. If the substance is less dense, it will float. And if it is more dense, it will sink. Combination of two or more substances is called a mixture. Mixtures are of two types, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. An example of a homogeneous mixture is a solution. A solute must completely dissolve in a solvent. An example of heterogeneous mixtures are emulsions. The solute is dispersed in the solvent. So let's explore. Since we have learned about all the solutions and mixtures, find out some mixtures and solutions that you use in your daily life and discuss it with your class.